Online Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner, Chuck, and this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, the blind tasting version. So we've been talking a whole lot about Napa Valley lately, and uh, Napa Valley Cavs, specifically, um, two days ago, yesterday, and now today, we finish off with this little three-part series with a blind tasting of five top notch. I had Ian pick out five. Here's what I told him. Five top notch premium California cabs, 30 to 100 kind of range. Let's battle them out. Battle Royal blind style. A lot of you watching right now just did this. Yes, because you love the blind format. People love the blind format. My, I love the blind format. Do you love the blind format? I get into trouble with the blind format. Yes, we had that whole thing with the wine. That's a very good point. We did have a hoopla once before. So. Uh, Let's, uh, let's get right into it. Wine number one, Mott. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break them down. Mott, can you give me a pen if you don't mind? Um, I'm gonna just put little notes like I did last time. It was pretty helpful, actually. Um, this is wine number one. Thanks, Mott. Wine number one. Then we'll unveil them at the end. Let's get into this wine. Let's give it a... I'm good. I'm in good shape. Um, yeah, right in the back. Let's give it a sniffy snip. This one. Big dark fruit. Now a lot of these wines are gonna be driven. You're gonna see a lot of similar tasting notes. Cabernet, let's talk about Cabernet globally. You're gonna get a lot of black fruit. You do get red fruit, plums, blackberries. You sometimes get subtle tobacco. Black tea I pick up quite a bit on cab. When they're over oaked or not even over oaked, when there's a good amount of oak, you're gonna get vanilla. You're gonna definitely get a, you know, a milky kind of dairy component that I tend to get. Um, Asian spices, sometimes subtle peppers, um, but really a lot of black and red fruit. Very candy-esque at times if they're over the top. Very big, bold wines. People love, you know, the love fest with Cabernet has definitely subsided. I mean, gosh, the first part of my career was completely built on Cabernet. Um, from the 92 to the 2001 vintage, that nine year stretch, and really 94 to 2001, that seven year stretch, the majority of what I sold in the store hand selling was California Cabernet. Insignia got hot in those years. Um, Whitehall Lane, um, just big in those categories. Those were the wines people bought from us, much more than Bordeaux, much more than Spanish and Australian wines. And they've definitely tailed off a little bit because I think people drank a lot of them. When you go to the steakhouses around the country, people drank the cake breads, the kiss, uh, no, me, the cake breads, the farnientes, the camuses, the opus ones, the silver oaks, the staglins. People kind of run that course and are exploring other parts of the world. But that should not diminish the fact that Napa Valley Cabernet is some of the best wine in the world and very fan favorite out there. So, you know, keep that in mind. Whereas my tone sometimes on Napa Cab might be a little lower, it's only because I kind of just did that for seven years, I think. So a little bit of that sparkle, that pizzazz has gone away. But it's like you're, you know, your significant other. Even though maybe the first week you started dating, that sparkle is a little bit diminished, it's still great, you know, and you gotta keep that in mind. Though my sparkle with Lizzie is still on, on like Donkey Kong. Let's give this a sniffy sniff. Again, this is kind of interesting right off the bat. A little bit different than I expected. This actually smells a lot like a hundred grand candy bar. You know the hundred grand? There's a little of that coffee, the ca I mean the, uh, the wafer component that I'm getting here. It's also a little stinky, which is kind of unusual. So right off the bat, I kind of prepped it like this is gonna be this and we're going in a totally different direction and that's the beauty. My friends, that's the romance. That's what gets me fired up about vino. You think one thing and it goes in a totally different direction. I get a little stinkiness here. Little dirt component like soil. A little how, cow manure. I mean, this is kind of stinky for a Cabernet. Blackberries are coming through as well. I get a little cassis. Not getting a huge amount of oak, which is exciting me. Really, this is, an, uh, you know, Ian could be kind of getting on me. So, you know, almost Bordeaux-like on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Good ripe fruit, maybe kind of say, okay, not Bordeaux, but a little coffee, a little tobacco on the back end. We've been hearing tobacco from Mott and my guest two days ago, um, and I wasn't picking it up, but on this one I do. Um, good licorice component, like melted down licorice. Um, really, actually, really, that's a good one. Melted down black licorice. If you take a bunch of black Twizzlers, put it in the microwave, do -do 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 -do. stand away from the, come back, Gob that up, you know, with some kind of hand that wouldn't burn. Um, you're gonna get this kind of taste. I get a really rich licorice, cassis, little hints of milk chocolate, little hints of tobacco. I like this wine. It's a good start. Let's move on. 
line number two. Right off the bat, mod, I don't know if you, you noticed, a lot darker. A lot darker on the color. Okay. Line number two. This is three, right? Now. See what's going on here. Let's give it a snippy sniff. One thing I noticed right off the bat, a little bit of darker, denser color than the last wine. Now this is much more candy-esque on the nose. This is very heavy in raspberry meets cassis. Makes a baby, let's call it rasquis. Rasquis on the nose, um, big, bold, Red fruit flavors, much different than the last one. More That was more Dark Knight. This is more Strawberry Shortcake. Let's give it a whirl. A little orange peel coming through here as well. Very seductive, interesting little nose. Let's give it a whirl. Good firm tannins on this wine. Basic to me. Um, no, no, I know. I'm going. Thank you, Mom. Mom was like, "No, what are you doing?" I'm writing down the price tag that I think it is of the last one. A little basic to me. Um, again, not trusting Ian. I, this could be a ringer. Um, kind of like fluff in its approach. Um, good, good fruit, cherry, dark cherry, raspberry flavors coming through. Gobbled up in a little bit of oak. A little too much oak for me. A little basic. I don't know, very much textbook $20, you know, Cabernet, um, and kind of boring, to be honest with you. Good fruit and nothing else. So it's like, you know, I mean, yeah, you can throw the ball far. You know, it's like a good look, you know, wow, that's a great prospect, but not accurate and not leading the person and, you know, not a tight spiral leap and like a flappy rain duck that went 70 yards. That's what it tastes like a little bit to me, Mott. Some good tannins on the back end. Really nice tannins which aren't bitter and have good blue fruit in them, like blueberries, and great red fruit flavors, but a little bit of a little bit of a you know little whoop, little bit of a lack of mid palate, which is always an issue to me. Let's move on. Wine number three. Let's get a rinse. <laughs> Zoom it in, Mott. Spine tastings are a lot of fun for me. You know, you get rid of the preconceived notions. Um, I like when Mott zooms into a brown paper bag. I think that's funny. Um, I also like the fact that we get to spend time together, Vaniacs. It's a lot of fun. Miss you guys. Thanks for all the emails and the support. Please keep passing on the show. Getting a lot of people email me the last couple weeks saying, hey, Randy sent me the show, and she was right. This rocks. So, Keep doing that, that's always fun. Want new Vaniacs, great color again. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Now this is the candy of the bunch. It smells exactly like cotton candy. Um, just absolutely, positively, Carnival, Flemington Fair, Big Ups, 1993, Carnival candy, cotton candy action on the nose. Do you get that, Mott? Like, it's unbelievable, like really cotton candy. Like, like big time. Um, Big, big cotton candy play. I don't even have anything else because it smells so much. It smells exactly like the pink cotton candy. I got nothing else. I'm moving on. It's unbelievable, really. Ah! The oak monster has made an appearance heavy on the vanilla. Goopy. Plenty of uh, love handles, almost too much. Just a very thick, viscous, driven Cabernet. Um, too oaky for my palate. Um, um, a style that a lot of people would like out there, so I'm not gonna bash it, but to me this is sugarfied. This has the most sugar in it. Borderline dessert wine-esque to me. I get a lot of plums, cut a plum in half, suck it in, pour some sugar on it, and a little maybe like cherry juice from like a sips 
and bite that, that's what this tastes like, throw a little vanilla extract. Now this is what it tastes like. A complete lack of tannins. Makes me feel like this one would only last two to three years. Um, and it's quite boring. I know I can have this for $15 from Australia. I just don't know how much this costs from California. Or, Ian got sneaky sneaky and I'm gonna have one of my best moments on Wine Library TV history. A mess, not into it. Let's move on. Wine number four, ooh, tear it. Wine number four. Did, rinse? Well, I did not like that last wine. You knew it right away? Grimaced. I grimaced. Like the, uh, wow. This is the darkest wine of the bunch so far tonight. Great dark color on this wine. All these wines so far are definitely your hamburger, your steak, your big meats kind of wines. Um, you know, Morton Steakhouse um, kind of thing. You order these kind of cabs. That's where they rock and roll. Great dark color. Let's give us a sniffy sniff. This is interesting. A little bit different. A little charcoal component right off the bat on the nose, which is really intriguing to me. Red beets coming through, which I think is quite interesting on the nose. Smokiness, leather, tobacco, uh, no, leather, um, beef jerky, thank you. Tobacco, beef jerky, you know, they're both. So, leather, beef jerky, charcoal esque, very dark. I like this, I like the nose. Again, Bordeaux like, it's got a kind of interesting shape. Maybe, maybe uh, Ian's fooling around here a little. Let's give it a whirl. This is very good. I like this wine. Um, good dark fruit. I'm getting lots of blueberries, lots of blackberries, like just gorgeous blackberries. Good firm tannins. This wine will last an easy seven to 15 years. Um, this is the kind of wine that I love to decant and get into. I like the charcoal. I like the second tier flavors of blackberries and blueberries. Very dark blue fruit, black fruit. I like that. Great length, great tannin. No dippy dip here. This is straight line city, my friends. And it explodes on your palate. A very focused bottle of wine. It comes down to when you see two athletes or like horses, like you can see in their face sometimes when you have to bet the ponies. You know, great, sometimes you find these great athletes. I mean, I think about Luther Wright former center from Elizabeth in New Jersey, went to Seton Hall. They have all the physical attributes, Eddie Curry, but they don't have the focus, the eye of the tiger as Rocky Balboa would want to say. This wine has the eye of the tiger, my friends. This is focus. This comes from great fruit source, clearly. The winemaker was not bullshitting. You understand? This was an absolute complete effort from top to bottom. I'm still tasting it. One minute finish, great length, coach your palate, doesn't apologize for it and bring straight thunder. A perfect pairing with food and a wine that I would definitely put away in the cellar for 10 years. This wine rocks the hizzy and it's not joking. Give it one more shot. There is some oak here. There's a little oak monster-esque kind of thing but the blue fruit and the dark fruit and that charcoal is really riding the day here. It's not smoky, think of charcoal. Chalkiness kind of, very good. Great dryness, by far the driest wine. If you're an old school dry fan, a lot of people don't say that anymore, as they did seven or eight years ago when they said, I like dry wine. This is dry, it's Pucker City. This is a good wine. It's a good, good wine. What's on? It's good to get wines like that. And finally, wine number five. Now this one has a slight competitive advantage because five is my favorite number of all time. So, you know, I've just gotta tell you how it is. I don't wanna be upfront, transparent with you guys. I feel like a Skittles rainbow myself, with the purple. <laughs> all right, let's give this a sniffy sniff. This is completely weird. Wow, this is fun. This has like an evergreen, minty, slight eucalyptus, mojito, minty, isn't that wild? It's different. Really different, right? There's something else there. Musky, too. I, I'm not gonna say it's corked, cause it's not, but it's a very different. Um, I hop blueberry syrup thing on the depth, in the, on the nose. I would say this is like minty pancakes with syrup. 
eucalyptus component. Almost smells like cactus juice, kind of wild kind of thing going on here, guys. Very interesting. eucalyptus kind of minty is where it's coming from, but not that height style. A little different. Um, I do get the concentrate of like syrup, um, like like Aunt Jemima syrup. Maybe that's where I was going with the IHOP syrup. I get like a syrup component. It really makes me think of Belgian waffles and, and, and pancakes because it's like the toppings, like the fruit and the syrup. I get a little bit of that coming through. Very curious where this is gonna go on the palate. Let's give it a whirl. Gosh, this tastes like something. Gosh, this really tastes like something, like a food. Not foie gras, not a, which I don't eat that much of anymore because I'm the Vaniacs. Um, not escargot. Damn, darn it. This tastes like something I've had and I can't put my finger on it. It's kind of like oyster juicy meets caviar. It's like pearls and oysters. I can't put my finger on this. This is a very unique Cabernet. Um, I definitely get a eucalyptus minty kind of component going on for sure. There's a cough syrup kind of thing going on. Yeah, that's what, like a, like a little bit of a cough syrup. There's also something I love so much, almost like a root beer component to this wine. I'm completely confused by this wine, to be very blunt with you. And, uh, and I'm excited about unveiling it. Let's see. So, to put in order, a little pomegranate action too. Um, here's how I have them. So, wine number four is in first place. Wine number one is in second. Wine number five. Wine number two. And dead last is wine number three. Let's unveil them, Baniacs. Let's go backwards, because that's the fun. In last place, with a score of a 79, um, I guess that this wine's 30 bucks, because I just know the style, but I wouldn't pay more than 10, is <sighs> Behringer Napa Valley Cabernet, 90 points wine spectator, 30 US dollars. Not, look at that, I said 30 on the bag. See that, it's good work. And I said 82, but then I dropped it three points. Um, I totally agree, disagree with the spectator. I'm a big fan of Behringer's Napa Valley program, but this really did not show well. I did not like it at all. I thought it was over-oaked. They tend to do that at Behringer at times. Again, I'm a pretty big fan of their normal stuff. Um, I'm pretty surprised, to be honest with you. Pretty disappointing effort. Let's move on. In uh, second last place, wine number two. Um, scoring this wine 84 points. I'm guessing $21, no mid palette. And Barnett, 2005 Spring Mount Valley, Spring Mountain District, uh, Napa Valley, Cabernet, 91 point spectator, 52 US dollars. I'm not feeling it. Um, and I'm normally a huge fan of Barnett. This is very surprising to me, but did not do it for me, friends. Let's move on. Wine number five. Completely baffled, you just saw it. I don't even know what the heck is going on. I'm gonna go 89 question mark. You know, I didn't, I, I liked that it was unique and you know I like that, but I wasn't really enjoying it. Um, but I'm giving it the question mark because I'm confused. So sorry, SS Chris, that's where I'm going. I'm guessing it's a $40 wine. Steltzner, 2004 Reserve Barrel Select Stag Sleep District Cabernet Sauvignon. And this wine is 92 points spectator, 55 US dollars. I'm gonna have to give that a pass as well. And so, you know, that kind of really doing its thing so far, Mott. This one I liked, wine number one, 90 plus points I'm giving it, I'm guessing 35 US dollars. Newton. Unfiltered 2005 Cabernet from Napa, 92 points Parker, 40 US dollars. Um, I'll agree with Parker, I thought this was a very good wine, thought it was quite sound, it was a great starter for us, and I think it did its thing, 
and uh, and I'm proud of Newton. Good job by Newton. Usually you think of them more for their white wines, but this unfiltered cab was very, very good. And finally, the wine that definitely stole the show. I went 92 plus on this, guessing $45. Uh, seven to 15 years in your cellar. Whatever this is, buy it. Find it, write it down, order it on a menu, go to your local store, find this wine. It rocks, unless it's expensive. <laughs> Cliff Lede. 2005 Napa Valley Cabernet Stag's Leap District, 92 Parker, $48, I went 45, though I didn't know they were between 30 and 60, so I'm no hero. However, this wine is exceptionally good. Um, 2005 Vintage, 48 Bones, 92 Parker. I think you can find this in a lot of restaurants. I think they knocked it out of the park. Um, kudos to Cliff Lede and to Newton, both wines in the 40 to $50 range. And ironically, huh, look at that, besides the Behringer, the two wines that were the most expensive, 55 and 52, I really didn't love. Um, but again, 91 Spectator, 92 Spectator, 90 Spectator, didn't do well, but hmm, kind of, you know, listen, I love the Spectator and I'm no Parker, right, either. I, I just, you know, everybody's got their own palates, but kind of ironic, three wines I hated, 90 sp above in Spectator, two wines I liked, 92 Parker. Kind of neat, kind of interesting, that was kind of wild. Blind tastings, Mott. Blind tastings is where it's at. Might need to go blind forever. Might go blind for the whole year 2009. Question today, should I go blind for the whole year in 2009? This is where you need to come out, lurkers. We're gonna do data. Listen, if it's overwhelming one way or the other, we may go there. So let your vote count. It's cool to vote. Remember, you, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world. I like this episode.